The primary perception myth is that all life, from the highly evolved to the most simple, is interlinked, aware of what is going on around it, and has psychic powers. By using a polygraph and EEG machine to detect any vibes, they subjected a plant and live bacteria to stress. Nothing happened that time. Their results haven't given them a concrete answer either way, so they're going to try another experiment, this time with human cells. White blood cells from Tori's mouth will be put into a test tube. Gold wire will be inserted into the tube and connected to the EEG. Then Tori will be tortured to see if his own cells in the tube feel his pain and freak out. Tori, would you come over here? I need to take your leukocytes. You're not going to use that on me. Leukocytes, commonly known as white blood cells, live inside the body. A simple way to catch them is to spit. Tori horks into test tubes filled with saline solution. With my mask in your mouth, this is probably a really great audio moment. Go. Proud of his Italian heritage, Tori may be, but his display doesn't exactly rival the beauty of the Trevi Fountain. Fresh. Mm, lovely. Spit cappuccino. Grant is looking a little queasy. Dude, you let a dog lick your face. This can't gross you out. Then the test tubes of spittle go for a spin in a centrifuge. The force of the hyperspeed circular motion will separate the cells from the liquid. You realize if something goes wrong with this, we'll be showered in Tory's spit. It's disgusting, isn't it? Grant checks a sample to make sure they've captured their quarry. That is definitely a white blood cell. Now, here comes the shocking part. Can we have somebody else do it? I just don't trust her for some reason. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got to run the EEG, she is, so. She's enjoying it too much. I think you have to close your eyes so you don't expect it. Mistress Carrie is going to inflict physical pain on Tori using a <laughs> stun gun. <laughs> close your eyes. Stun guns emit electric currents, so they move Carrie far enough away that when she turns it on, it won't cause interference on the EEG. That's pretty good. Out of range, she's ready to fry her friend. Do not try this at home. These devices do hurt bad. Ah! <laughs> it's worse when you don't know what's coming. So did you get anything? Nothing. No reading whatsoever. Where you want it? Oh, don't put it in any place that would really be bad. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> maybe a little bump, but you Nothing. know. There's barely a flicker on the EEG that indicates the isolated white blood cells sense anything. With our uh, remote stimulation of Tori. How about now? We haven't seen any response. <gasps> I think we can safely say this one's busted. It's busted. I don't see anything happening. <sighs> no. No. All right, so we finished all these experiments. You guys had fun shocking me, but we still haven't been able to explain those weird results that we got with the plant and the polygraph. I think you'll find if we take all of the ways that we learned to isolate our experiment from outside influences and apply them to this last experiment, we'll get our answer. The final experiment is a cracker. This time, the innocent chosen for the sacrifice is the humble egg. Grant whips up an intimidating looking metal rig designed to break a bunch of eggs at random intervals. So this is the egg dropper and I've got 10 cylinders here and the shaft of the piston blocks the egg from falling. When I trigger it, the piston will go up and the egg will fall through. Dude, this and thing is badass. You like it? I love it. You can take it home after this. This test is to see if one cellular being, a plant, responds when another cellular being, an egg, is destroyed. The test has been designed to completely block outside movement, vibration, or electrical interference from affecting the results. Here's how it'll go. The plant will be put on a foam base and connected to the polygraph inside the shipping container. Grant's egg dropper will be placed outside the cage 
over a pot of boiling water. Then the eggs will plummet one by one into the drink. Okay, once this boils, we'll be ready to go. No one, not even the eggs, will know when the time comes to meet their maker. Not only will it choose a random cylinder, but also the time delay between cylinders will be random so that the eggs can't anticipate when the next one's gonna drop. The eggs are locked and loaded. You just need to make an automatic toaster, automatic orange juicer. Mm -hmm. You're in business. Okay, you guys ready? Yep. So once I do this, we have 30 seconds to exit. Okay. Ready? Three, egg. Egg. two, one. Sequence started. Every single soul, including the crew, exits the building. Trapped in the wheel of death, the first egg drops. If the myth is true, the plant should have reacted. The same when egg two falls. Omelet, anyone? After 45 minutes, the team comes back inside to check the results. So we're looking for a jump in the polygraph when the egg drops. Correct. That would be the plant's response to the eggs buying it in the boiling water. <laughs> okay, there's the first one. And no reaction on the polygraph. No screaming, no psychic activity. Well, I had a quick look at the trace, uh -huh. and it was kind of varying just a little bit, but... But nothing in, in correspondence to the dropping of the eggs. No, definitely not. It's not even a peep. <laughs> just a... It's a cool egg dropping mechanism. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> even with the plant and polygraph in total isolation, the needle still didn't move. Along with the eggs, looks like Baxter's theory of primary perception is broken. I think we've done a really good job of replicating all of the primary perception experiments. I mean, we got the right plants, we got our vintage polygraph, we've been extremely thorough. We're drowning in polygraph paper. I found out I'm a sadist. From all this, what do we get? Well, I agree. I think we did a really good job of isolating all the variables, things that might have influenced the original experimenters and given a false positive. There's vibration, electromagnetics, and most importantly, we took ourselves out of the equation. But there was a point where we got some weird results, but we weren't able to repeat it. And if you can't repeat it, it's not science. So this one's busted. Busted. But I did like shocking you a whole lot. I know, you guys didn't get to feel it. I think maybe we should share. <laughs> no. I thought no. I took the batteries out of that thing. I thought you did too. <laughs>